very good evening uh, to you all uh, dear brothers uh, in christ so last week uh, we studied about a, a class called as type and type so the model and uh, real so we all know and we all have seen that uh, the things which are written in the old testament is just a image of the things uh, real to come that is in the new testament so that is called as a type and any type so we also uh, seen that uh, the things uh, mentioned uh, so many things uh, in the old testament uh, 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 you see uh, those all things reflect the uh, christ and the gospel church uh, new testament so last time what we studied was that uh, we studied about uh, we took an example about uh, abraham's life and we saw that how abraham you see sacrificed his only son um, isaac so it was a type of uh, heavenly father sacrificing his only son jesus uh, you see so we saw so many similarities how they had to walk uh, three days uh, to the mount of moriah and how the wood was carried by isaac himself and how uh, you see isaac was bound and laid on the altar by abraham and how isaac did not uh, rebuke or fight with his father when he was supposed to sacrifice him so this all signifies how the three and a half years ministry of uh, jesus christ and how the golgotha was climbed by jesus himself and how jesus had to carry his own cross and how when jesus was laid on the cross he did not murmur against god so so we have seen all those uh, types and any types so today we are going to continue this little bit further and see what is the meaning of uh, three wives of abraham you see when uh, abraham himself is a type of god and isaac is a type of jesus christ then surely the three wives of abraham also should have a meaning so if you see in the bible abraham had three wives you see huh? the three wives are sara agar and ketura so today we are going to see what does this three wives signify you see abraham was a very rich person and uh, he had a beautiful wife uh, called as uh, sara you see and uh, they were quite rich but uh, abraham had everything but uh, he lacked uh, one thing and that was uh, that uh, he lacked a, a heir for all his uh, property he did not have a son you see and uh, you see and uh, that is the time that uh, abraham was uh, praying to god and seeking for the one true god and that time you see a uh, god called him to the promised land and abraham journeyed also but uh, even then they were not blessed with uh, any child and that is the time that uh, sara you see uh, sought a, a concubine or a wife to marry uh, abraham and her name was agar you see based uh, on the compulsion of sara abraham married agar and as soon as abraham married agar and she was a egyptian slave you see immediately ishmael was born but uh, even after uh, ishmael was born god uh, never forget the promise uh, which he had made nearly 25 years before that uh, in thy seed that means in abraham and sara shall a child come a seed come and they shall bless all the nations of this earth dear brethren so three angels uh, actually visited their house and one of them was the lord jesus christ uh, and uh, they again you see uh, told uh, the covenant uh, you see uh, to abraham saying that in thy seed in sara you see sara shall be blessed uh, and you shall have a child when this was told to abraham you see abraham could not uh, control his laughter he fell on the ground and laughed laughed laughter so if you see why did abraham laugh you see abraham laughed in joy at this age at the age of nearly more than 120 years am i going to be blessed with a child you see dear brethren but that was the faith which abraham had and according to that faith at the age of nearly 100 years abraham and sara were blessed with a beautiful child 
and that child name was Isaac. And uh, as uh, Isaac uh, began to grow, you see, there was a problem in his family. You see, two wives, two children. So what will happen automatically? There will be a tug of war. So as they began to grow, you see, Ishmael began to tease. Uh, you see, and uh, you see, and riddle uh, Isaac. And it was not very pleasing to Sarah at all. Sarah could not never control this one that anybody teased his son in front of her. And uh, she told Abraham, this is not possible. We both can't live together. So please send off, you see, uh, Ishmael and uh, Ishmael's mother, Agar. You see, what I'm telling you is just a story. Dear brethren, these are all mentioned in the book of Genesis. 20, you see, chapter 20 to chapter 26, all these things are mentioned. I request everybody to kindly read it, okay? But initially, Abraham did not agree. Abraham did not agree to send, you see, Ishmael and uh, Agar. But upon the compulsion of Sarah, and as God directed him, you see, he sends uh, Ishmael and Hagar into the desert. But what did he give? Did he give any property? Did he give anything to the hands? If you say, no, brother, he just gave a little bit of bread and water and sent them away into the desert. So, as uh, they were wandering in the desert, they had a terrible time. You see, whatever food they had, in that when they sustained the life. But once everything was over, Ishmael was almost at the verge of death. He was almost supposed to die. But at the dying moment, you see, Agar had no choice, you see, than to pray to God. She sheltered her son as much as possible, you see, from the death. But ultimately, when nothing could be done, Agar pleaded before God, God, have mercy on my child. That is the time that, uh, you see, an angel, you see, uh, came to Agar and comforted her. And uh, you see, a brook of water, a fountain of water was opened, you see. And uh, because of that water, you see, Hagar and uh, Hagar's son, Ishmael, lived. You see, Dibran, but uh, as uh, this picture was happening parallelly, that means as Hagar and Ishmael were suffering in the wilderness, there was a parallel event happening in the life of Abraham, you see. Huh? You see that Isaac began to grow, and Isaac, as he grew, what happened? Sarah passed away, and the wedding of Isaac took place. We all know that uh, who was the wife of uh, Isaac. Who is the wife of Isaac? Can anybody tell me who is the wife of, of Isaac? Rebecca. Very good, Rebecca. You see, Rebecca was the most beautiful virgin. You see, she gave uh, camels uh, uh, to drink water. No, how many camels? Ten camels. Each camel will drink 50 buckets of water. 10 camel means 500 buckets of water. Who, which beautiful woman will take her from the well and give it for the camels? Nobody will do that, but uh, she did it. And uh, Abraham had sent, uh, you see, uh, his uh, chief servant, uh, Eliezer, to seek a wife for Isaac. And uh, Eliezer, seeing the character of uh, Rebecca, he was so stunned. You see, he prayed that uh, God has blessed his journey. And when he approached uh, his brother Laban, Rabbi also agreed for it. Immediately he traveled. She had to travel a long distance, more than 300 kilometers on the camel. And uh, you see, came to see, you see, uh, Isaac. And as soon as uh, Isaac, uh, you see, uh, Rebecca saw Isaac, uh, immediately she put a veil upon her face. So, dear brethren, after this, you know, by the time, you see, Sarah was dead and uh, Sarah was uh, buried. After that one, you know, you know, a miracle really happened. Abraham married for a third time, you see. And after the third marriage, you know, how many children were born to Abraham? Huh? Six children were born to Abraham. Let us read it. Over. Genesis 25th chapter verses 1 and 2. Anybody can read? Mosam or Krishna Badar, anybody can read? Genesis 25, 1 and 2.
Then again, Abraham took a wife and her name was Katura. And she were him, Jimron and Joksan and Medan and Midian, Midian and Asbek and Soha. Uh -huh. See, he married the third wife. The name was Ketura. Who were one? Six sons. Zimbran, Jokshan, Midan, Midian, Ishpakshwa. Imagine for him, Isaac to be born. That itself was a great difficulty, isn't it? But uh, after the death of Sarah, Imagine at such a old age, giving birth to six children is really stunning. The other hand. A very, very great surprise. It is almost impossible. You see, but that has happened. Now, what is the meaning of all these things? What does the uh, Bible say about all these things? We all know type and anti-type. All the things written in the Old Testament are type. Fulfillment as seen in the New Testament. Let us read Colossians second chapter, brother, sixteen and seventeen, brother. Most brother, can you read Colossians second chapter, sixteen to seventeen? Okay, brother. Uh... Sorry, I removed the verses to give you yeah, opportunity to read from the Bible. Yeah, okay. Col Colossians 2, 16, 17. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's written here. Uh, Let not men therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of any holiday or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. Hmm. Which are a shadow of good things to come, but the body is of Christ. See? Shadow, good things to come. That means body is of Christ. Which in Christ, everything is there. Uh, you see, fulfilled. So we all know, you see, Abraham represents God and Isaac represents Lord Jesus Christ. Then, who does these three wives of Abraham represent? Uh, right? This should also be given in the Bible now. If that is all given in the Bible, right? this also should be given in the Bible now. Where is it given? What does it mean? These three wives of Abraham in the Bible signifies three covenants. Let us read, brother. Galatians 4, chapter, brother. 22 to 24, brother. Galatians 4, chapter 22 to 24, brother. <clears throat> Krishna, brother, can you read? Okay, sir. Go on. Galatians 3 chapter, sir. 4 chapter, verse 22 to 24. 22 to 24. For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by the bond man and other by a free woman. But he who was of the born man was born after the flesh, but he of the free woman was by promise. Which things are an allegory, for these are the two covenants, uh -huh. the one from the Mount Sinai, uh -huh. which generates to bondage, which is agar. Uh, you see, what does it say? Uh, Abraham had two sons, born out of two men. One was a servant and one was a free woman, a natural woman, a natural wife. And uh, what does the Bible say? Verse 24. These things are an allegory. You see, for these two represents two covenants. You see, that means Abraham's wife means what? It signifies two covenants. Now, what is this covenant? You see, huh? covenant means what? Uh, agreement. You see, in those days, the agreement used to be called as what? Uh, covenant. Agreement. You see, now why do we make agreement? 
we can make agreement because of guarantee because of a surety you see we make agreement why because of surety dear brethren or else what will happen now if anything happens here yeah, there will be no guarantee then we will be cheated we don't want to be cheated hence we make agreement house agreement lease agreement you see a sale agreement correct no? even while buying a vehicle we make agreement eh? it's a document why because taking a agreement is a guarantee similarly god made covenants in the bible agreements in the bible okay how many did god make there so many you see covenants which god made and the first covenant which god made was with adam it's given in hosea 6 7 you can read it huh huh so hosea 6 7 says you see god made a covenant with uh, adam but adam broke that covenant and the next covenant god made was with noah you see he put a uh, you see rainbow in the sky you know and said this is the token of my covenant henceforth i will never destroy the entire earth by a flood so that was the covenant which god made with whom noah so that was the rainbow covenant and the third covenant an important covenant which god made was with abraham that's what we reading now that in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed so just imagine <clears throat> this covenant god actually made with abraham so let us look what all names can be given to this uh, covenant which god made to abraham but let us read that verse once brother genesis 22 16 to 18 uh, most of brother can you read genesis 22 16 to 18 genesis 22 16 to 18 Hmm. Okay, brother. Genesis twenty-two sixteen to eighteen is written here. Hmm. And said, "By myself have I sworn," said the Lord, "for because thou that thou hast done these things and hast not withheld the son, thine only son, that is that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply the seed." as the star of the heaven and as the sand which is upon the sea shore in the seed shall possess the gate of his enemies ah. and in this see here uh, god says I, i have sworn upon myself that in thy seed all the nations of the earth shall be blessed so this covenant covenant god had made with abraham so therefore we can call it as abrahamic covenant and did god put any condition no if you do this one i will do that one no god had put conditions to adam if you don't eat the fruit thereof i shall bless you but here god did not put any condition to abraham no conditions were there that's all okay god did not tell you do that thou do this all these things no no he said let your children be obedient or not in thy seed i shall bless means i shall bless there was no condition therefore this covenant is called as a unconditional covenant the third one how did god make this agreement he sealed it with his promise he promised upon himself so therefore this is called as a oath bound covenant and the fourth name this covenant is telling whether you are good or bad i will bless that means what this is grace whether the people of this world do wickedness whether the people of this world do good i will definitely bless everybody i have taken an oath upon myself therefore this covenant can be called also as grace covenant okay and uh, you see god sealed it therefore it is a promise okay now let me ask you is there any difference between promise and agreement do you know any difference between promise and agreement or else are both one and the same are promise and agreement one and the same 
agreement initiated by both parties, uh, but promise uh, can given by only one person, like uh, God promised to Abraham, and Abraham has nothing to responsible for that promise. Very good. Okay, good. Awesome, brother. What about you? Mm, yeah, uh, promise is basically um, um, made by one person to another, no? Uh, then that if we accept that, uh, it will become agreement, I think so. Okay, good. See, I'll give you an example. I will promise you that I will give you a thousand rupee. How, 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 much, how, much, how many of you believe it? I will tell tomorrow, I promise you that I'll give you a thousand rupee. So, yes, Paul. does it mean that I am surely going to give it to you? Probably. 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 We, don't know. we don't know. Correct. That is the promise. But if I make an agreement and sign a contract and tell you, I will definitely give you a thousand rupees. See, I made a signature and give you an huh? One agreement. means what, what does it mean? Does it mean surely or does it mean probably? Now you are in bondage. Ah, very good, brother. This is the oath. This is the agreement. See, God not only promised Abraham, he made a covenant. So there is a difference between agreement and promise. See, I promise. I'll promise whatever I want. But uh, keeping the promise is up to me. If I didn't, if I don't keep the promise, nobody can do anything to me. But if agreement is done, we are bound to do it. Therefore, God, you see, made an agreement. Let us read on verse, brother. This is very beautifully given. Hebrews 6 chapter, brother. Hebrews 6 chapter, verse 13 uh, and verse 14, 16. Read, brother. Read from verse 13 to 16, brother. The explanation is given there. Huh? Hebrew 6.13? 6, ah, 6.13. Correct, brother. Huh? For when God made promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, he swear by himself. Huh. Saying surely, blessing I will bless thee, and multiplying, I will multiply thee. And so after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. Ah, he obtained the promise. You see, he says, God promised to Abraham. He swore, he swore it. Why did he swear upon himself? Why did God swear upon himself? Because there is no other person who is greater than God. So God is the greatest person. So he swore upon himself. Now why this swearing takes place? You imagine you know, in school days, imagine while playing, uh, somebody would have hurt uh, a neighbor's child. Uh, he would have hit with a stone, blood would have started to come. Immediately the child will come and uh, secretly hide in the house. Then uh, neighbor's uh, parents will come along with the child. They will call, see what your child has done? He has uh, uh, hit my stone with, uh, hit my son with a stone. Blood is flowing. Then immediately, what will the parents tell? No, no, my child is not like that. He is very good. See, he is writing there decently. Huh? Why telling lies upon my child? Why simply blame on my child? Then they will tell, no, no, call your child. Ask him in front of us. Then if you come and ask the child, huh? tell me, man, what happened, please? Huh? Did you do it? If you tell, what will the child tell? Mother promised mommy. Mommy, I did not do it, mommy. If the child tell like that, uh, imagine whom will the parents believe? Will the parents believe the child or will the parents believe the neighbors? Tell me. Did you understand? Parents believe child. Uh, parents will believe the child. Why? Because his child can never take a false promise upon his mother, who is greater. So, by taking a promise, by taking a oath, it means 
that is the end of argument that is the close of the chapter that means that is the very fact that is the truth that will be fulfilled read the bible says in verse 16 verse 16 hmm. again verse 16 and so after he had patiently endured he obtained the promise 16 yeah 16 6 16 no? yeah you read 15 for men verily swear by the greater and the oath for confirmation is to them and in of all strife. Ah, see, for men verily swear by greater, and an oath of confirmation is end of all strife. If somebody takes a oath, it means it's the end of everything. That means there is no further debate at all. That is the reason God did not want mankind to have any doubt, dear brethren. Therefore, he wanted the mankind to have confirmation that he is surely going to bless. That is the reason he made a covenant, not just a promise. You see, dear brethren, therefore, you see, Abraham had three wives. Now, let us see the comparison. You see, huh? what does the Bible say? Now, come to Galatians. Let us read Galatians. Fourth chapter, brother. Fourth chapter, verse 24, brother. Huh? Which things are an allegory for these are the two covenant that one from the Mount Sinai, which gendered to bondage, which in Agar. Which is Agar. There are two covenants. And one covenant, it says, it is from Mount Sinai. You tell me, at Mount Sinai, which was the covenant that God gave to Israel? Which covenant did God give at Mount Sinai? What did Moses come and collect from Mount Sinai? Ten, ten, ten commandments. Commandment. Yeah. Ten commandments. That means the law. So, Apostle Paul is telling Hagar represents the law covenant. You see? Huh? Now, you see what happened there? Huh? Verse 25, brother. Continue, brother. Now, verse 25. Huh? 25 also? Mm. For this, Agar is Mount Sinai in Arabia, and and so and so to Jerusalem, which now is and is in bondage with her children. Ah, see, there Hagar and Ishmael. Similarly, law covenant is having their children, and it is in their bondage. It seems. Remember, Hagar was not a queen. You see, she was not a princess. She was a slave woman whom Abraham married. So similarly, this law covenant, you see, God made this covenant with the people of Israel. You see, and as the uh, uh, people of Israel uh, were under this covenant, they came under the bondage of the law covenant. You see, as Hagar married Abraham, Immediately, Ishmael was born. Similarly, as soon as God made the law covenant, the Jewish nation was formed. They were under this bondage of the law covenant. But uh, did uh, God forget the original uh, promise that in thy seed the nation shall be blessed? No. There was a real seed that was to come and that was Isaac. Read verse 22, brother. Read verse 22. Mm. Galatians 4.22. Brother. For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by a bone maid, the another by a free woman. Uh, other by a free woman. That means Sarah also represents a covenant. Okay. But she did not have the child immediately. It took a lot of years to have the child after the birth of Ishmael only. So similarly, see, who does this uh, Sarah represents? Uh, 
If you read that verse, verse 26 is given there, brother. Answer. Read, brother. Verse 26. Huh? Galatians 4, 26. Ah. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. Ah, there is a mother for us all, it seems, brother. And that is a heavenly Jerusalem, it seems. Now you tell me, which is the heavenly Jerusalem? Which is heavenly Jerusalem? Huh? Heavenly Shivan? Jerusalem. Where, where do we read about heavenly Jerusalem in the Bible? Revelation heavenly. 21st chapter. Heavenly Jerusalem, we read in the Bible, no? Huh? Okay, let us read. Revelation 21, brother. Revelation 21, verse 2. Revelation 21, verse 2, brother. Yeah. And I saw, and I zoomed, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Ah, bride adorned for the husband. Bride is Jesus. Ah, sorry, bridegroom is Jesus. Bride is the church. So heavenly Jerusalem means what? The church. Ah? Now read verse 28, brother. Galatians 4.28. It's given there only. See? Galatians 4.28. Now we, now we written as Isaac was, are the children of promise. Are the children of promise. So there, Sarah gave birth to Isaac. So similarly, this Abrahamic covenant gave birth to the heavenly Jerusalem class. That is we. Therefore, remember, God promised two types of blessings to Abraham, heavenly and earthly. Sand of the seashore, stars of the sky. Now let us come to the picture of Abraham. Abraham initially loved Sarah very much. But she did, but she did she give birth to a child? No. So similarly, God loved this covenant. He took a oath upon himself that in thy seed all the nations shall be blessed. But did that seed come immediately? Did Jesus come immediately? No. Jesus did not come immediately. Okay. That covenant was supposed to wait. So there was a lot of time gap from the promise which God made to Abraham till the law covenant. Therefore, law covenant was added. As soon as law covenant was added, what happened? The Jewish nation came into picture. But even though the Jewish nation was selected by God, God's chosen seed was Lord Jesus Christ. You see, and the church. But uh, once when the Jesus Christ came to this earth, uh, what happened uh, immediately? You see, uh, the persecution began. Read Galatians 4.29, brother. Galatians 4.29. But as then he that was born after the flesh persecuted him, that was born after the spirit, even so it is now. Mm, so it is now. You see, there what happened? Ishmael persecuted Isaac. Similarly, when Jesus and the church was born, that means they began to grow. Immediately the Jewish people began to persecute first Jesus and then the church. Therefore, both the people could not live together. The Jewish nation and the church could not be mixed together. So what did God uh, told uh, Abraham? He told Abraham to divert. So similarly, the Jewish nation was rejected. Read, brother. Read verse 30 and verse 31, brother. Same. Galatians 4, 30 and 31. Nevertheless, what said the scripture cast out of the one woman and her son? For the son of the one woman, born woman, shall not be here with the son of the free woman. So then, brethren, we are not children of the born woman, but of the free. But of the free. So there what happened? The persecutions happened so similarly. 
So Israel as a nation was cast out totally, and they had a lot of trouble. We, say, we are going to study about the class of Israel in the coming days. But once uh, Israel people crucified Christ on the cross, God rejected Israel as a nation. They suffered a lot of things. Uh, you see, they were humiliated. They were tortured, especially during the Second World War. You see, 60 lakhs and more than that one, the Jews were persecuted. And that was the dying stage, uh, you see, for the people of Israel. But what did uh, Hagar do? Hagar did not keep quiet. Uh, she prayed to the Lord. And as she prayed to the Lord, you see, a fountain of water was shown. So similarly, today, the nation of Israel is there, but it is there in lot of trouble. In future also, there is going to be severe trouble upon Israel. And that is the time that the people of Israel will cry to God. God will give them the living waters, the truth. So let us read Zechariah 14.2 and Zechariah 12.10, brother. Krishna brother, can you read one of the verses? Zechariah 14 2, can you read? Ashi, uh, also, brother, can you read Zechariah 12 10? Zechariah 14 2, sir. Uh. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city shall be taken, and the houses refilled, and the women revealed. And half of the city shall go forth into captivity, and ah, the of the, city. Of the so, people shall not be cut off from ah, the city. See, half of the city shall go to captivity, it seems. All the world shall gather against Israel, it seems. That is the future. That is the end point of uh, almost uh, Ishmael will be dying. Uh, that is the stage we are going to approach in very future. Okay, this is a prophecy. We're going to study all these things in the coming days. But that is the time that uh, Hagar cried to God. Similarly, Israel people will cry to God for help. Read with her. Now read Zechariah 12 And I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and of supplications, and they shall look upon me whom they have preached. And they shall mourn for him as one mourn for his holy son. Ah. And shall be. See, without knowing, they crucified Jesus. But at the time of Third World War, you see, which is going to shortly happen, you see, they will cry to God for help. And that is the time that God will help Israel. As God helped Agar to save Ishmael, similarly, Israel shall be saved. How? God did not give any super blessings from heaven, but God showed him the fountain. That fountain is a fountain of the living water. Abraham. That is how people of Israel shall be saved. Read Zechariah 14.3, brother. Have you read Zechariah 14.2? Read Zechariah 14.3. Krishna, brother, read Zechariah 14.3. Hmm. Fourteen three. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. Ah, then God will fight. As God saved Agar, similarly Israel shall be saved. Now, as this is happening, parallelly what was happening? Isaac was preparing for the marriage. Isaac means what? Huh? Jesus. Now, Jesus, bride. Now, who is the bride of uh, Jesus? Uh, church. Church. Rebecca means the church. So here what is happening parallelly? Eh? The church uh, is getting selected. See, as we are seeing trouble over Israel, you can see you know, a lot of war, Gaza, bombs, all these things. These are all Bible prophecy. Eh? Israel is suffering. Here the church is being developed. Bible is preached. Many people are coming to the knowledge of truth. The church is developing. Uh, you see, but once this marriage is over, what will happen now? You see, once the church is united with Christ, what will happen? Now? Eh, a special thing will happen. You know, Abraham will marry third time. That means a third covenant is going to happen. And the special thing about the third covenant is that six sons will be born to Abraham. It seems. Oh, you imagine eh? when he could not give birth to Isaac, six sons. This is really shocking. How can he give birth to six sons? But that is what is going to happen. That means 
Ketura represents a new covenant which God is going to establish with the whole world in the thousand years. Let us read about that covenant, brother. It's beautifully given in Jeremiah 31, 31 to 34, brother. Most of the read, brother. Jeremiah 31, chapter 31 to 34. Jeremiah 31st chapter 31st to 34. Okay. Yeah, it's written here. I uh, behold the days come, said the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. And 34, no? Ah, correct. See, I'll make a new covenant. Ah, how will this covenant be there? Continue. Uh, should I continue? Uh, continue, continue, brother. 30, okay. Read till verse 34, brother. Okay. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand of hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. Ah, which... This is not like an Egyptian covenant. This is not going to be like uh, Agar slave. What did they do with Agar? What happened? Continue. Huh? Which my covenant they break. They break. Uh, they broke the covenant. Uh, Ishmael began to persecute Isaac. God broke the covenant. The marriage was divorced. Uh, then continue with her. Huh? Although I was an Husband unto them, Underline, the Underline, although Lord. I was a husband, God is the husband of Israel. Abraham, husband of Agar. So similarly, God is husband of Israel. Continue. Uh. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, said the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts and write in their heart and will be their God. Ah. And they shall be my people. First and they shall... given on tablet, stone, but here it will be written on heart. By heart, mm -hmm. we'll tell now, read by heart, by heart it. It will be coming from the heart. Continue with huh? And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me from the least of them unto the Greatest of them, said the Lord. Oh, for I will forgive. Know, Everybody will know. From least to the greatest. Continue. Uh, from the least of them unto the greatest of them, said the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity in and I will remember their sin no more. No more. This is the new covenant. No, if you tell this one to the whole world, the whole world will be blessed. What will the people think? I oh, this is impossible. Uh, but this is possible. How many sons were born to Ketura? Six sons. That means the people of this world who lived for 6,000 years. They are going to come back to the world in the resurrection. All the people lived in the 6,000 years have come back to in the resurrection. If we tell about the 1,000 years plan of salvation for all, what will the people tell? They will get surprised. That is the meaning of word Ketura. The word Ketura means incense. A beautiful, you see, a very good smell. You see, huh? that is the meaning of a word Ketura. So similarly, this plan which God has made for the whole world, where all the dead are going to come back to life. You see, they're going to live on this earth. This is a beautiful smell to whom? For a suffering world. But not many people will accept it. He says, so similarly, now, what did we study today? Abraham, three wives, represents three covenants. You see, first covenant from Sarah, second covenant from Hagar, third covenant from Ketura, from Sarah, Isaac was born. That means that represents the church and Jesus Christ. 
from uh, Hagar, Ishmael came. That represents the law covenant from whom the Jewish nation came. But uh, there was a quarrel between Isaac and uh, Ishmael. So similarly, the Jewish nation persecuted Jesus and the church and crucified them. So what happened? Uh, they were cast out. They were divorced. Uh, you see? And uh, Isaac was married. After Isaac's marriage, Abraham married the third time and six sons were born. Uh, six sons represents the 6,000 years people who are living on this world. Okay? So, uh, let the Lord uh, add his blessings to these words. I will send the notes of this uh, class. Please go through it for any more clarification.